seen the historical buildings like the Qutub Minar and Red Fort in Delhi, the Taj Mahal at Agra and the Amer Fort in Rajasthan. Questions must have entered your mind as to how the ancient people managed to lift heavy construction materials from one place to the other at construction sites. Certainly, they were not equipped with technology as we have today. They used animals and labor in lifting stones from a lower position to a higher. You must also appreciate the fact that the use of animals and labor in lifting heavy construction materials involved risk and a lot of time. It was also not economical as a number of laborers were involved in the same task for a long period of time. Today, besides historical buildings, you are also seeing skyscrapers. Do you know why these skyscrapers are built in a very short time when compared to the ancient times? It is because of the invention of cranes. When you look at one of these cranes, what it can do seems nearly impossible. Why doesn't it tip over? How can it carry so much load? How does it grow taller as the building grows taller? If you have wondered at any of these questions, then this video film is for you. Because in this film, you'll find out answers to all these questions and lots more. Tar cranes are mechanical and electrical devices used to lift and move heavy loads vertically, horizontally and in angular direction to meet the specific purpose at construction site. Hence, tower cranes are common fixtures at any major construction site. They are pretty hard to miss. They often rise hundreds of feet into the air and can reach out just as far. The construction crew uses the tar crane to lift steel, concrete, large tools like acetylene torches and generators and a wide variety of other building materials. Parts of a tar crane All tar cranes consist of some basic parts. The base is bolted to a large concrete pad that supports the crane. The base connects to the mast or tar which gives the tar crane its height. Attached to the top of the mast is the slewing unit, the gear and motor that allows the crane to rotate. On top of the slewing unit are three parts, the long horizontal jib or working arm which is the portion of the crane that carries the load. A trolley runs along the jib to move the load in and out from the crane's center. The shorter horizontal machinery arm, which contains the crane's motors and electronics, as well as the large concrete counterweights. The machinery arm contains the motor that lifts the load, along with the control electronics that drive it and the cable drum, as shown here. The motors that drive the slewing unit are located above the unit's large gear. Now let's find out how much weight this equipment can handle. How much weight can they lift? A typical tower crane has following specification. Maximum unsupported height 265 feet or 80 meters. The crane can have a total height much greater than 265 feet if it is tied into the building as the building rises around the crane. Maximum reach 230 feet or 70 meters. Maximum lifting power 19.8 tons. Counterweights 20 tons or 16.3 metric tons. The maximum load that the crane can lift is 18 metric tons or 39,690 pounds. But the crane cannot lift that much weight if the load is positioned at the end of the chip. The closer the load is positioned to the mast, the more weight the crane can lift safely. The 300 ton meters rating tells you the relationship. For example, if the operator positions the load 30 meters or 100 feet from the mast, the crane can lift a maximum of 10.1 ton. The crane uses two limit switches to make sure that the operator does not overload the crane. The maximum load switch monitors the pull on the cable and makes sure that the load does not exceed 18 tons. The load moment switch makes sure that the operator does not exceed the ton meter rating of the crane as the load moves out on the jib. 
A cat head assembly in the slewing unit can measure the amount of collapse in the jib and sense when an overload condition occurs. Let's find out what keeps these massive structures standing upright. When you look at a tall tower crane, the whole thing seems outrageous. Why don't these structures fall over? especially since they have no support wires of any kind. The first element of tar crane stability is a large concrete pad that the construction company pours several weeks before the crane arrives. This pad typically measures 30 feet by 30 feet by 4 feet or 10 by 10 by 1.3 meter and weighs 400,000 pounds or 182,000 kg. These are the pad measurements for the crane shown here. Large anchor bolts embedded deep into this pad support the base of the crane. How do they grow? Tar cranes arrive at the construction site on 10 to 12 tractor trailer rigs. The crew uses a mobile crane to assemble the jib and the machinery section and places these horizontal members on a 40 foot or 12 meter mast that consists of two mast sections. The mobile crane then adds the counterweights. The mast rises from this firm foundation. The mast is a large triangulated lattice structure, typically 10 feet or 3.2 meters square. The triangulated structure gives the mast the strength to remain upright. To rise to its maximum height, the crane grows itself, one mass section at a time. The crew uses a top climber or a climbing frame that fits between the slewing unit and the top of the mast. Here's the process. The crew hangs a weight on the jib to balance the counterweight. The crew detaches the slewing unit from the top of the mast. Large hydraulic rams in the top climber push the slewing unit up to 20 feet or 6 meter. The crane operator uses the crane to lift another 20 foot mast section into the gap opened by climbing frame. Once bolted in place, the crane is 20 feet taller. Renting a tar crane. Most construction companies rent their tar cranes from a company like Heath Southeast. Heat ships the crane to the site, assembles it and charges a monthly fee while the crane is on the site. The rent prices include shipping the crane to the site, renting the mobile crane used to assemble the tar crane, the cost of the crew that handles the assembly, etc. You have now seen how with the help of these cranes, heavy construction materials are moved from one place to another at the construction site. There is a relationship between the height, load and the movement of the crane arm. Cranes can be divided into various types depending on this height, load and movements of the crane arm. Because of this, they are also divided into two categories, stationary and mobile. What you have seen here is the mobile crane. These cranes are built on a truck which can move around quite easily at the construction site. The only preparatory work they require is that of placing the counterweight. Also, the operator doesn't need to sit in the truck of the cabin. He can sit at a convenient place nearby and can monitor the movement of the crane arm. Stationary cranes, on the other hand, have longer arms and larger load lifting capacity, even though they require a concrete foundation in the ground. Hence, from here you've seen how these cranes have made work at the construction sites easier, less time consuming and definitely less risky.